Hi, and um, welcome back to Back to the Good Life. I'm Mr. G. And my name's Nikki. So um, for for today, we are, we're talking about in reducing our environmental impact during the winter. So that's a really big topic. I think we're going to... What we're going to try and do is actually put it down to minimising our, our waste during the winter because that's a big part of trying to be eco-friendly as much as possible, isn't it? Yes, yeah, indeed. <laughs> and when it comes to waste, it's not just things like food. It's repurposing and trying to to use what you can. Well, if you can hear wandering around at the moment, our dog's just trying to quietly walk around under the <laughs> table so we're trying to trying to organize him so um do you want to delve right into it and... let's delve into it so we we are on a mission in this house aren't we to kind of minimize our output as much as possible our waste output anyway yeah Not effort I've, output. I've, <laughs> I've been um slowly getting there as well actually considering yeah. it was uh something that it's still a fairly new concept. I was picking up quite well, I think. Yeah, I mean, well, it's really good. I think it's about looking at what, like, what areas of impact we have, and then what we can do about it. Because it's not exactly an easy topic, no, it's is just it? A, a changing your perspective or your mindset, mm. uh, and seeing where you can just adjust little things. Really, isn't it? Yeah. What's been what? This is a big question. What's been the biggest change since we got together? that you've done in the whole minimising your waste? <laughs> uh, plastics is, is one of them, really. It's a really I mean, big topic. I mean, shopping now, it's not taking plastic bags, uh, mm -hmm. either, either reusing plastic bags, which, that's still quite good, but more of a um, something that's going to have a little bit more longevity and not fall apart. Yeah. Or end up blowing off into the wind and yeah. ending up yeah. in a lake or something, which is not really good. I think that's definitely a big one, shopping. like It's so easy to pick stuff up that is... Sometimes you're picking it up and you're just like, why do I even have this in my hand? The magical mystery aisles in Aldi and Lidl are really bad for that. I love them, <laughs> but it's stuff you never knew you needed. And that's the problem. So, <laughs> we're generally, like with our food, we're... Mm -hmm. Anything that we can't reuse, we're, we're trying to compost it, aren't we? Yeah. It's... I mean, we make some amazing meals out of leftovers. Sometimes Could you don't you... even know what the original meal was. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, it's, I think that's one massive way of being able to cut down general over, uh, overindulgence almost. Yeah. It's because you buy things. Much, yeah, but... right. You, you buy things, you you eat what you you've got. Or, or your your portion, and a lot of the time, it tends. It used to be, at least for me, be a case of, well, there's only a little bit left. I'll I'll just chuck it away instead of reusing it for mm. another meal or putting it to some other use. Yeah. Um, and composting is pretty good for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can't do too much composting here, sadly, because because of the proximity of the compost heap to the house. But we do have council composting, so it feels slightly better that we're putting the food waste into council into composting, it, yes, indeed. which is good. And hopefully when we get our allotment, we might be able to do some composting there. That would be good for the soil. <laughs> it would be really good for the soil. We can make all sorts of things out of the <laughs> compost. So, what do they call it? Black gold or something, the com compost is its nickname? Yeah, I think some, something along those lines. Something yeah, like that, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, another way we're using um, reusing food waste is to dehydrate it as well. So like when I'm chopping up onions, I'm taking off just an, just an outer layer of the onion, and then the obviously the papery bits, popping it in the dehydrator and making onion powder. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's a revelation to me. Wow. And we're getting our greens in. Yeah, we're, do, we're doing that with about. almost uh, with almost all of our food waste. We're, the edible parts of it anyway. Yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? You kind of you've got some bits that look a bit tatty or a bit kind of like you're not going to eat them, but you might as well just chuck them in the food dehydrator and make a nice powder out of them. I did that with um, a packet of mushrooms the other day that would, had looked just a little bit past their best for like just so general for mush mushroom <laughs> eating, but they made a perfect mushroom powder. 
ones that were dehydrated, and you wouldn't know either. Great for soup stocks. It's very true. I've never eaten the stalks of mushrooms. They just feel a bit too odd. But <laughs> now I just chop them up and chuck them in the dehydrator. I feel slightly better about that. <laughs> That's the best way for it, I think. <laughs> best way for it. I've actually got this moment in time while we're recording this podcast. I've got a fruit leather in the pot, in the dehydrator. I don't know if it's going to go well. That would be good to try. I've kind of mushed up all the fruit with some sugar and bits and pieces, and just chuck it in a blender and spread it out in the dehydrator trays, and we'll see what it tastes if, like. If it works, it works. Yeah, I mean, it's all <laughs> trial and error at the moment. Yeah, it is. I think that's probably one of the most exciting things about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Trying to expand our um, just reduce our footprint of things and expand our knowledge on yeah on how we get there yeah i saw um a tv show i can't remember who made it i think it was bbc but i'm not sure um and they said the average person's carbon footprint is 13 tons a year i think it's 13 tons a year that's quite impressive i it mean if we can reduce lot, it though. just by a few tons yeah i don't know what ours is in, in general as a household or personally, I need to. We'll need to look into it. I think it'd be interesting to find out. I'm not sure how you'd even calculate it, to be honest. I'm sure there's an online calculator somewhere. So, along with our um, reducing of plastics and uh, and food waste, mm -hmm. we came across quite a um, quite a good. I say locally. I don't think it's overly locally. So. Oh, still... are you talking about Oddbox? Yes. Ah, yeah. Oddbox. Oddbox is so cool. So they uh, they call it rescued veg, which is probably the line that got me in their marketing, to be <laughs> honest. I was like, yes, need to rescue some veg. But no, they they source as, I think, I think they source as much locally as possible, but then they have farms, because like, they've got some farms in Spain and Portugal and stuff like that, that, again, they'll take, take food from take that's food from. not suitable for the supermarket and stuff because supermarket just has some really stringent rules on what they're allowed to sell which seems a bit daft if you ask me but yeah we got our odd box every couple of weeks and that comes with so we got purple carrots in it the other day so cool yes. they yeah. were quite nice but yeah they and they rescue veg that is it looks a bit wonky or there's too much or it just doesn't the the the, the quality of it is either just not up to supermarket standard really is it yeah but i, I haven't actually noticed like it, the, we open that box up and it smells amazing it's, well it smells of good food it does <laughs> and so far i think there's only been one thing that's actually been in plastic and they couldn't get they couldn't avoid that one so it was the lettuce we got the right. little gem lettuces but other than that everything is because we got the tomatoes they were in a um brown bag so so the brown paper bag, same as the mushrooms. Yes. So, and it's just a bog standard cardboard box that you break down, fold up, and then give it back to them, and they use it for the next lot, which is like amazing. Well, again, <laughs> it's it's reducing little by little. It is. I think it's really cool as well. Um, and we're quite lucky because we have got a deal going with Odd Box, so that if you want to get an Odd Box, you want to start up your own Odd Box, you can get ten pounds off your first order. Just follow our link below. So that was the very subtle piece of... <laughs> segue into... Very subtle segue <laughs> in there. <laughs> but yeah. But another service that's just reminded me, another service we're also using um, is Milk and More for our milk. And their full-fat milk is lovely. Oh, my gosh. Their milk is amazing. It's proper fat on the top or cream yeah, on the top, cream sorry. Cream on the top. We have to shake it all in and oh, yeah. it's lovely. They do do other ones, like for the more slightly more health-conscious people, they do do. Because I had to order... The skinned one from my mum when she comes up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically water, but it tastes nice apparently. So. <laughs> but yeah, yeah they, they, they again, it's quite a, an open array of things. Don't they do um, washing up liquids and things like that? Yes. And conditioners? Oh, they come from Phil. Absolutely love Phil. Their Instagram account is amazing. We like interact with them loads. But we get their washing up, Phil's washing up liquid and laundry liquid and fabric softener. Um, all three of those they come in glass bottles pint bottles and then once you're done you just put them out with the milk bottles and the milkman collects them and washes them they get reused them. again yeah. it's just it's brilliant it's so good to have a closed loop system and again we're not even though before we were using eco laundry liquid so it's planet friendly and it was in a recycled bottle but it's still a plastic bottle it's that's going into the plastic going into landfill and, which, well, it's not landfill but well it's whether or not our council decides to recycle it and, <laughs> 
<laughs> Not only that, it's helping, like, it's, it's helping the farmers get a decent price on their um on on their milk that they're selling. Yeah, the dairy farmers. That's really important yeah. as well. It's and, um you know, it's, it's been a easy. bit of an issue for 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 them over the last few years and i don't think it's going to get much better no it's not sadly and i don't think there's any real i think the more people that realize that milk and dairy farming and things like that is not the enemy and they go to using like more traditional milks like we've got like milk and more the milkman it's just it's a much better kind of way of doing things and you're not relying on the supermarket to drive down prices can you not bulk buying either so Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's take what you need instead of yeah uh, over overtake and end up wasting. Yeah, that's say. actually true. I mean, we can always like order more as well. Like we order three pints a week, and we have it like three three different days. And if we have like if we know we've got guests coming at the weekend, I just put I'm another just another pint one. or yeah. two on the order, and it's so easy. And our milkman's really nice. He gave us a Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to like him for that. Yeah, I hope you gave him one back as well. I did, yeah. I gave one to our milkman and then one to everyone at the depot. Ah. So that's kind of nice. And it was a recycled card, Christmas card. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so apart from our our foods that we we get in, mm-hmm. or the milk and the, the odd box, mm. um, we've been trying to to think ahead of uh, for for the next few seasons and during yeah. the winter considering that our climate is pretty wet and, uh, and yeah. dreary uh the joys collect- of the west country isn't it <laughs> yes yes um collecting rainwater seems to be yep. a, quite a good idea this time of year yeah it is we've literally to as we're recording this today um, we released a blog on our website, back to the good life dot com. Um, <laughs> slight segment. Got to get it in. Got to get in there. Um, no, we released a blog on our website about whether or not rainwater in rainwater barrels or water butts is actually safe to use on your vegetable plants and stuff. I didn't think about whether or not it would be safe, but short story is, and spoiler alert, it's very safe. Oh, that's good. Right. That's good. <laughs> Generally, it's quite safe. <laughs> it's not safe to drink though. No, a bit right. of filtration needs to go a long yeah, way. Nothing, there's nothing bad about it. I mean, like, once you, you can literally just filter it, pro- obviously filter it properly, um, and then you would be able to drink it. But, yeah, it's not drinkable for humans, but it is drinkable for plants. Yes. Well, so. that, that's good. It means <laughs> that our, our veg and, uh, and whatnot's going to be flourishing come, come spring, summertime. <laughs> It might be. <laughs> hopefully, it'll be flourishing. Let's say hopefully. <laughs> but no, well, we're doing our we'll we'll do our best. But it does mean that we can like water the plants. It's like right during the drought season without using nice. Mames water again. Yeah. It, it's reducing that that sort of impact we have mm. and not taking from the system if we don't really need to. Yeah, and also it means we can avoid the hose pipe ban because if when there's droughts in the summer. We always get hose pipe down around here. We do, yes, we do. But we'll be there with nice flourishing vegetables because we've got the watering can <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, the um, the collection's going really quite well, actually. I think we mm-hmm. we should have a look at in investing in either more storage. <laughs> yeah, water storage. <laughs> because it's um, not in short supply. No, not at the moment, especially this weather. We've got two 100-litre tanks, I think they are out there but we have also one of our other drain pipes is already set up with all the the um the pipe thingy the gubbings the The stuff yeah (laughs) i don't know what it's called um so literally all we need to do is buy another tank and thing and but that's out the front which is not a problem Ah, no that's good that's good you can just cart it around wheelbarrow it is and (laughs) wheelbarrow full of um watering cans (laughs) by the looks of it later on (laughs) <laughs> it's quite useful to get a wheelbarrow there. We can put all sorts of stuff in it there. Maybe that's a topic for another day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's, let's not <laughs> so um, things. overfill it. So many things. Another thing, actually, just talking about the garden, because it's completely <clears throat> reminded me, another way we are reduced in our waste, because we're meat eaters, that's never going to change. Yes. And yeah. at the moment, we've not kind of got locally sourced butchers meat and all of that kind of stuff. It's just not something that we can, logistics-wise at the moment, do yes we're working on it though um 
But I reuse the meat trays, seedling trays. So yes. my whole greenhouse yes. is full of seedling trays. She has a lot. And yeah. uh, I don't think that's going to reduce any time soon either. <laughs> no. <laughs> but We've it probably is a... got more seedling trays than we have space in the garden. But I'm, I'm kind of manifesting an, an allotment here. I'm it, hoping. <laughs> it does work really quite well, though. I mean, mm. it, using them just as a starter for the plants to, to grow. Yeah, and then put out into the into the garden once once they've um, taken root. Yeah, and we had um, a friend last year that gave us a load of because they only drink bottled water in their house, but the big five litre bottles, yeah, plastic they used water them bottles. As cloches, didn't yeah, they? I literally just cut them in half and use them as cloches. Yeah, for like so you put like a courgette plant in the ground after it's come out of the greenhouse. Of course, it's greenhouse to ground is pretty chilly, so. Stick it in the ground, put one of those over it for a week or two. It kind of helps Just to give it a little bit more climatize them. So a little bit more of a, a fighting chance for life. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually one more, which we didn't discuss beforehand. One more it's not really reducing waste, but how are we going to be reusing something in the garden? And it's pretty special. Can you think what I'm talking about? I'll give you a clue. I bought some bits for it this weekend. You're going to have to, to enlighten me. I... Typical man doesn't remember yeah, these things. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to be growing some special flowers this year, aren't we? Ah, now i yeah. got your drift. See, yes. now you've got the drift. So do you want to tell the lovely people what sort of flowers we're going to be growing? Uh, we're going to be growing ourselves some edible flowers for... Um, Next year, isn't Next it, darling? Next year? Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. No, we're hoping to grow and press the flowers so that we can actually put them on our wedding cake. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully part of our wedding cake is going to be homegrown. Just the decoration. <laughs> and it's quite nice as well. It's something that we've taken by hand, mm -hmm. nurtured and uh, and yes. um, incorporated. Mm -hmm. We have to find somewhere to put them, though. I mean, amongst flowers. all your... Uh, all your vegetables that you've, you've got planted. Yeah, put them at the top of the, at the, top of the, the um, fence. Help our pollinating friends as well, yeah. then. See, everyone gets help. <laughs> and we've also been saving and dehydrating all of the um, petals from Rosie, our rosebush. Yes. Because we're going to use them for confetti. Now, Rosie, our rosebush was our, our first Valentine's present. Well, my first Valentine's present to my love here. Oh, you're so romantic. <laughs> oh. Don't tell everybody. Yeah, no, sorry. No, he's not at all. <laughs> Definitely not romantic. Ruins your street cred, doesn't it? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> street cred. <laughs> Don't think you've got any love. <laughs> but no, it's going to be, no, be nice to do that because we can put the edible flowers on the, on the cake and the decorations it's, it's... and then we can use the petals and stuff as... It's confetti yeah. when we go into our... I say, it's um, repurposing in all, in all ways. Yeah, and it's, the thing is, it's also part of the whole kind of keeps everything in the loop of what we're doing. So we're not yeah. kind of outsourcing to... I mean, it's not a problem with people outsourcing and buying stuff they need, and we're going to have to do no, I'm pretty sure like you that, can buy yourself just pre-dried edible flowers. You but... can, but we're going to give it a try. <laughs> oh, the effort will pay off. It will hope pay so. off. I really do hope so. <laughs> I mean, at the moment we've um, well, we collected all of our our fallen leaf litter, haven't we? To be able to yeah. to use on our garden, up. and it's um, slowly mulching in. Hopefully, <laughs> it's um, not going to be a long process because um, hopefully it'll be better when it rains a bit because we actually haven't had any rain for a week or so. Yeah, no, I mean it's, it's cold at the moment. Yeah, isn't it? it's so, really, really cold. But um, yeah. yes, we have. We have leaf mulch, which is currently nourishing our, our little plot of garden. <laughs> little. <laughs> little being the main word. <laughs> <laughs> Mini garden. Although saying that, just as a complete aside from everything, um, I found an Instagram account. We followed them the other day. They're amazing. Uh, Cloud Gardener, I think it is. He has like a balcony. And he has like amazing amount of plants on his little tiny balcony. See, so inspiring. You're able to do it when you put your mind to it. Yeah, well, I'm kind of slowly stalking his account and finding, <laughs> finding what he's been doing, like writing notes. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's food for thought as well. Hmm. Food, talk about food, I'm hungry. Oh, happy birds night as well, by the way. 
Yes, we're recording this on Burns Night. <laughs> That's why I'm hungry, because we've got haggis cooking. Yeah. I'm looking forward to, mm. to eating your haggis neeps and tatties, is it? Oh, haggis neeps and tatties. <laughs> my, an- my Scottish ancestors are so happy with that. <laughs> on that note, shall we wrap it up and go and have some dinner? Because I'm very hungry. Uh, my, yeah, why not? Why, why not? <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the Back to the Good Life podcast. My name is Nick. My name is Mr. G. And we'll see you next week. Next week. See you later. Bye.